one of the biggest problems faced with electronic circuits these days is ESR, and you've heard me talk about this before, equivalent series resistance of electrolytic capacitors increasing, causing failure of these circuits. And I guess the easiest way to explain this is to show you the, the connection or the lack of connection between capacitance and ESR. In a perfect world, a capacitor is two plates or two electrodes with a dielectric between the two. This dielectric acts as an insulator to block the flow of current from one plate to another. And they do a good job of doing this at DC voltages. If you apply your positive voltage to one plate, it will push the electrons off of the other plate and it will take a charge. At AC frequencies though, this capacitor becomes more like a conductor. It will easily couple AC, uh, AC voltages and that's why capacitors are used in coupling circuits of amplifiers to couple one stage to another. They'll block the DC component, they will pass the AC component. So you've got internal resistance um, between the two plates at AC frequencies. I have on my desk here several capacitors that are bad in various sizes. I want to show you on my meter here how these capacitors look. We'll show a good one and we'll show several bad ones. The meter here I'm going to measure the capacitance. This is going to measure how many microfarads these capacitors are. Now these are all bad. Some of these ones here the tops are, are raised up and they're really really bad. Other ones are bad but they're not as bad as bad goes. None of them are usable, none of them are serviceable. They all fail the ESR test and they all had problems. They were causing a problem of a circuit. But let's just take a look at we're going to measure the microfarads of this capacitor here. And this capacitor is coming up at 939, 944. It's charging up, as you can see. 944 microfarads, it's a 1000 microfarad capacitor. I can get a good connection here. Here we go. So this capacitor is matching up about 930 microfarads. It is a 1000 microfarad capacitor. This capacitor is bad. If I turn on the ESR meter, a 1000 microfarad capacitor rated for 10 volts should measure, getting all tangled up here with battery chargers, should measure no higher than 0 0.12 ohms according to the chart here. I'm going to zero out my meter. That takes out any resistance in the internal leads. And that's important to do when you're dealing with a low ohms meter like this. Zero out the leads. And now let's measure this capacitor. Now an ESR meter can be used in circuit or out. This capacitor is measuring 1.3 ohms. And it should be no worse than 0 0.12. This capacitor fails. We'll move on to the next capacitor and we'll check this one. The ESR on this one here is 0 0.06, which you would think probably is pretty good, right? Until you realize this is 2200 microfarads. 2200 microfarads at 25 volts should be no worse than, well, looking for it here between 0.08 and 0.12. So this one probably passes the test. I don't think this capacitor is actually bad. 
0.05. This one's actually good. We'll take a look at what this one measures in terms of capacity. Twenty two hundred and twenty two microfarads. This capacitor is actually good. This one could be put back into service. Again, not all these ones are bad. That's what we're going to find out. Here's another one. This one's a hundred and fifty microfarad, one hundred volt capacitor. We'll test this one. Hundred and fifty eight microfarads. So microfarad wise, this is fine. Let's take a look on the ESR meter. 150 microfarad should be, what's my voltage? 100 volts, did I say? 100 volts. So it should be between 0 0.09 and 0.15. If it's between 0 0.09 and 0.15, it's good. 0 0.06, this is another good capacitor. Don't worry, I've got some bad ones here. Let's take a look at this next one. Ninety-seven point four microfarads. This is a one hundred microfarad capacitor. 100 mics at 10 volts. 100 mics at 10 volts should be no worse than 1.2 ohms. 6.9. This capacitor is bad, yet microfarad wise, when we looked at the capacity on microfarads, oh, it's measuring 112 now. So if someone was looking at this on a capacitor meter, They'd say, well, this is a 100 microfarad capacitor. There we are, 100 microfarads. They would look at this and say, this capacitor is fine. Yet, this capacitor here, the top is raised on it, if you look at it. The top is kind of bulged a bit. And the ESR fails miserably. Bad. Let's go to the next one here. Let's see how this one fares. 1,000 microfarad capacitor. This was coming up a little bit low. 8. Looks like 845 is what it settled in as. So that might draw some suspicion if you were looking at this with just your capacitor meter. How does it do on uh, ESR? 1.4 ohms. So 1,000 microfarad capacitor at 10 volts. So the limit is 0 0.12, and we're at 1.4. Bad. We'll try another one here. Eleven hundred and thirty-two microfarads. This is a one thousand microfarad capacitor. Once again, point three. Limit is point one two. Bad. This is a big one, so it's going to take a while to charge up. This is thirty-three hundred microfarads. changing because I'm touching it here but it came up at about 3200 there which 3200 microfarads will be within spec for 10% uh, tolerance but again it looks okay capacitor wise capacity wise and we look at it on the ESR meter 0.8 
and 3300 should be between 0.12 and 0.23 for this voltage. Bad. Now we have a brand new one, just for comparison. Here's a brand new 1000 mic 25 volt capacitor. It's measuring up 1110 microfarads. Remember, capacitors, if, even if they're 10% rating, they can be 10% under and they can be 20% over. Um, electrolytic capacitors are not a precision device, but it's, it's settling in at 1035, it looks like. Here's what a new one looks like on ESR. Point zero seven. Now, this is 10 at 20, or 1,000 at 25 volts, and point, it should be about uh, 0 0.09 is what a new one would be rated, and here we are coming in at 0 0.07. That's what you want to see. You want to see very low ESR, at least as low as what the chart on the meter will tell you that they should be. If this was coming in above that limit, it would be going in the garbage because it's on its way to failing. These capacitors here, bad. These two over here, good. These are used ones out of a circuit, but they're good. These ones here are used ones out of a circuit that failed and the, the device had to be repaired. So that's kind of where we're at with capacitors as far as capacity versus ESR. You can't really trust your ESR or your capacitor meter because a capacitor meter will a lot of times tell you that they are good when in fact they're not. Now here's something else that people will do. I'm going to put my meter into Ohm's test here. They'll look at a capacitor and they'll just measure it with their Ohm's meter. A lot of the old school guys will do this with an analog meter. You can do it with a digital or an analog meter. When you connect your capacitor up you'll see low ohms and then it'll start to go up and it'll eventually reach infinity this is as the capacitors start as, as the capacitors charging up an analog meter of course will it will kick and then come back but this by no means tells you anything about the capacitor other than the fact that it's able to take a charge if it short it would only tell you if the capacitor plates were shorted it won't tell you anything. You, you can't figure out capacity from this because it's, it's going to charge up. And as I can sit here for you know, 10 minutes as this thing charges up. Let's pick a smaller one. Let's pick this one that we know was really bad. This one here that the ESR was ridiculously high on. And we'll see that even this one will take a charge. Let's, let's short it to begin with so we start out at zero. And you'll see it's going up. Now this one's so bad that if you looked at this on an analog meter, it may, you may not get full deflection down towards zero. You'll get a bit of a kick. And it's going to charge up really quite quickly here because, again, it's not a very big capacitor. It's only 100 microfarad. But here at 390K, 400K, eventually it'll go into the mega ohm range and then it will, it will show up as open. The new capacitor here, same thing. It will charge up. So you really can't measure a capacitor using an ohm meter. It's not a very accurate way to measure if your capacitors are good or bad. And I wouldn't even use the capacitor tester here. This will give you an idea, okay, your capacitor is able to store you know, if it's a thousand microfarad capacitor, it'll give you a reading of how many microfarads it is, but it still doesn't tell you is it any good or not. The only way to tell if it's any good is to actually do a measurement with a proper meter, an ESR meter. That's the only way you're going to know whether you've got a bad or a good capacitor. And the beauty of an ESR meter is this is this is done at a very low voltage. It's only putting about uh, less than half a volt 
through the capacitor while it's measuring the uh, ESR. So because the voltage is low, it will not cause semiconductors to conduct. It will not provide enough voltage to forward bias diodes or transistors, so you won't get a false reading from semiconductors that are in your circuit. You're measuring just the capacitor. And you know, if you have two capacitors in parallel, obviously it's going to measure the two of them. So if you've got two of them in parallel, you're going to want to disconnect one. But it'll at least allow you to measure uh, capacitors in the circuit. Hope this helps. Happy troubleshooting.